everybody. Welcome to another FaithBridge family gathering. Wanted to take the opportunity to bring you a little update of what's going on and where we're going, which I think you're going to find some uh, to find to be some good news. But before we go there, I wanted to do an interview with a young lady named Paige Katzavanis, whose story many of you got to hear at church, on church, uh, two weeks ago. And we were inspired by it. We asked if we could go a little deeper into that story, and, and she graciously uh, said yes. And so welcome, Paige Katzavanis. Hi, thank you. Well, it's good to have you. Your story was so inspiring, and I want to ask you some stories about it. But first, I think I heard that you had a little surgery. Some uh, wisdom teeth come out this week, did I hear? Yes, Monday I had three taken out. Well, I hope your pain threshold is staying manageable. Yeah, it's getting there. <laughs> okay. Well, you're very kind to come on screen and, and talk with us in the aftermath of that. So let's go back. You you had such a touching, inspiring story for us a couple of weeks ago. You were, as I recall, going on a road trip. You were going on the Belize trip? Yes. Yeah, you were going on the Belize trip. You'd been raising money to go on the Belize road trip this summer. Of course, all mm -hmm. the road trips had to be canceled just because of what's going on. But you'd already raised some money. Mm -hmm. You had been raising that money by selling T-shirts. Yes. Then you had an idea. Tell us what that idea was. Now you can't go to Belize. You've raised money. You know how to do T-shirts. What'd you do? Yeah, so I still wanted to do the T-shirt donation. I still wanted to just... Um serve the community in some way. So I knew my dad had some contacts in hospitals. So I asked him, I said, hey dad, will you reach out to someone, see what I can do, see if they need any help. I know hospital workers are going through a lot right now. So is there anything that I could do to just help them out a little bit? So I reached out and she comes back. She's like, well, meals are really appreciated. And I was like, that's, that's a great idea. So we um, got in contact, we figured out what um, units we want to do. So we were going to do the ICU units who deal with COVID patients when they first come in and physicians, because she was telling us that physicians don't really get that much, um, that many meals. So I was like, yeah, like we can do something for them. So, um, we got in contact with Torchy's Tacos and Great American Cookie Company. And we rate, we got around 420 tacos for the morning and evening shift on our first donation and around 12 dozen cookies. I love it. And I bet that the response was one of overwhelming gratitude and, oh and excitement. Yes, it was insane. I, I put it out on um, Instagram, Facebook, a lot of social medias. And literally five minutes later, I was getting tons of responses back just saying, I want five, I want two, I want three. And I'm just like, oh my gosh, it was so overwhelming. That You're talking about the t-shirts that they, they wanted to buy the t-shirts. Yes, so I put it out again. Yeah. So I put it out before my mission trip and I, I got quite a bit of responses, you know, people wanted to buy them. And then I put it out again when I figured out everything I wanted to do and um, the food and where it was going. So I could really put it out and tell people like, hey, this is what I'm doing. Like, if you want to help out or donate, like, just let me know, like, reach out to me. I put it out and five minutes later, it was just going crazy. I love it. Well, people are excited to be a part of your vision and your creativity to serve in the community and what a very timely, practical, uh, Christ-like population to target the medical community. You're quite right. They have been through a lot. They're not out of it yet. The numbers are getting better, though. And so let's pray that that continues. At the same time, it's not going away well, till whoever knows, only the Lord, when mm -hmm. we'll get the vaccine, hopefully sooner than later. Mm -hmm. But I did I hear correctly, Paige, that you want to do another push and sell some more T-shirts and buy some more tacos and take some another run over to the hospital. Uh, is that right? Yes. Actually, I've raised um, $750 from just from the video alone a couple Sundays ago, which is insane. I think that's amazing. Um, but yeah, I want to do another push and I'll give you all the Zoom, or not the Zoom link, the um, Google link 
link or Google form link. So y'all can put that out there and we can get more orders in and I can do another um, run for them. We are, we're putting it up even right now so that people can go there themselves. And I assume they can either buy a t-shirt or two or five or 10, or they can they just make a cash or a yes. donation? Donation Either way, or if they don't need it. Yeah, works. great, fantastic. Paige, we're grateful for you. You're going to be going into the senior year of high school. Yes. How about that? I just love your innovativeness, your creativity, your ambition, uh, your willingness to roll up your sleeves and to serve in a challenging season like this. You set a good uh, example for all of us, young and old. Thanks Thank for doing you. it. Of course. Well, you rest up, keep getting well, and have a great start to your senior year. However, they're going to be delivering the, the content for you. Uh, we wish you the very best, and we're proud of you. Thank you. What an inspiring story from one person, one person who's making a difference. I challenge you, challenge me. Let's all do the same thing in this era um, because God's given all of us some creativity with which we could roll up our sleeves, help, serve, pray for, encourage some other people in this era. Speaking of this era, let's do a little orientation to where, uh, where we are in this era. Um, you know, what's been so challenging, I think, for all of us is that it's so unpredictable, right? It, because we're used to working with what we'll call a date-based calendar. Date-based calendar is what usually drives our lives, right? You circle a date, you say that's his birthday, that's when we're going to go on this trip, that's when we're going to do this, uh, that's when we're going to reopen the church. Uh, you know, these sorts of things, it's a date-based calendar. The challenge in this era that God is seeing fit to let us <laughs> grow in our sanctification a bit longer uh, through is that no matter where we set the dates on calendars, these things move because, you know, one month uh, things are looking pretty good. And then the next month, all of a sudden, all the curves are going back up and there's all these people getting COVID and it's spreading. And I think probably a lot of that just has to do with the uh, sort of the, the cautiousness factor. So, you know, when, when the numbers are getting good, it's because we're doing what we know we ought to do. Let's, let's keep some distance. I'm, I'm not going to give you a big hug, even though I would like to, but that's probably not the wisest thing. Let's keep the masks on. Um, but it's still good to see you, you know, and, and that sort of thing. The numbers get good. When the numbers start getting good, we tend to relax our guard and then the numbers start to get bad and there's more spread that's going on. So let me tell you what a group of pastors and I uh, were sort of working on several weeks ago. We said, you know, it would help us to move from a date-based calendar to a conditions-based calendar. And so we came up with this chart that has sort of a, a red column and an orange column and a yellow column and a green column. Uh, we're not going to get to green, I think, really till vaccine. Bring it quickly, Lord. Uh, but so we're in red right now and then orange will be next and then yellow would be next, right? So we're having this conversation because we're saying all of us pastors, particularly out here in Northwest Houston, it'd be nice if we just kind of did the same thing um, and sort of move generally in step with one another. I asked Dr. Boom at Houston Methodist Hospital, could you get on this call? He jumped on the call with us, which was most helpful. Uh, let me remind you, he's the CEO of Houston Methodist and one of the key players in the Texas Medical Center. That's not to be mistaken with the public health officials who have been getting a little heat because they're not giving much clarity, clarity to schools, clarity to other organizations. Uh, even Dr. Boom says the more clarity that the, that the officials uh, could give us and the more expedited uh, numbers and graphs that they could give us that we, you know, medicine needs data. We need current data, not data that's a week or two old data. Uh, and so we just went straight to Dr. Boom because he's like, I can tell you 
the best that I have. He said, let me take you to one graph that we created in the Texas Medical Center because the data is coming from the state of Texas slower than is helpful for us. He took us straight to this graph that uh, puts on one chart, one graph, the number of people with COVID in the Texas Medical Center, that's Methodist, St. Luke's, Texas Children's, MD Anderson, Herman, um, all of those numbers wrapped into one chart. He said, we aggregate those every single day. And this is a current uh, chart every day. It's ICU beds plus med surge beds. Um, and that's the number of COVID people. When we were having this conversation with him um, two and a half weeks ago, he said, you'll see we're right at about 2,400 people with COVID. He said, that's still manageable, barely. We're hiring traveling nurses that are coming in uh, because you, you can't ask your staff to work 24 seven. They have to go home, they have to sleep. Um, but patients need 24 seven care. He said, so we're very, very taxed. It's still manageable, barely. He said, but I'll tell you what alarms us in the Texas Medical Center. This was several weeks ago. He said, we went from May numbers, uh, well under a thousand on this chart, we went sevenfold, boom, just like that, up to 2,400. He said, is it still manageable? It's barely still manageable. We still barely have enough manpower. Uh, we're getting by. He said, but if it just did another boom times seven, he said, we would have problems on our hand in this city because now we cannot get nurses and doctors, even from other cities, we can't get them fast enough because they're doing COVID as well. It's not like there's a hurricane here and the whole country comes to our assistance. They, they, they've all got hurricanes. They've all got COVID right now. He said, so there's just not that many good nurses and doctors you could bring. We'd have to have a thousand new ones like that. He said, this is why we've been saying, you know, on the media and anywhere that will listen, help us, please help us, please help us, please. We pastors are like, we want to help. We want to do the right thing. We also want to open our churches. We, 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 that, we, that's the right thing too, because that's what we do. It's spiritual sustenance uh, and care and evangelism and discipleship. He says, exactly. He said, uh, so let's look at this chart. Do you see how it's, it's 2,400 right about when we were talking? We said, yeah. We said, what would you, if you were just going to throw a dart at the chart, what would you like the churches around the city to hold till if, if we so chose, because we're willing to, to help. We, we want to help our medical community and we want to do the right thing. He said, if you could give us till we're at 1200, till this curves down from 2400 to 1200, then you move to orange. That'll be our drive-in services. That'll be small groups, um, uh, adult groups that are 10 or under in people, he said, now you have to, have to, have to, you have to keep, you can't relax guard. He said, if you relax guard, the spread will, will be right back there again. So if you go to orange, really emphasize to your people, you gotta keep the masks on, you gotta keep social distancing. He says, I realize that has become so politicized. I hate that it's become politicized. It should have never been politicized. It's just a medical thing. It's a germ spread thing. Just say, let's not argue about it. Just keep your mask on. Let's go on and have our group. And he said, but, but keep distance as well. Keep masks on and distance. He said, and you want to drive in. He's looking at the orange chart, drive in services, things out. In your, yeah, yeah. He says, that'll work. And let us get to 1,200. We said, okay, what would we need to get to for the Texas Medical Center to, to feel you know, like this is very manageable. He said, if you'll let us get to, to 600 in the ICU slash um, med surge beds, 600 back in May, that seemed very high and we were trying to get it down and it shot up sevenfold. He said, if we could get back to 600, we can, that's very sustainable for our staffs and uh, we can go with that. Um, so we said, okay. That just made complex things simple for us. Let me bring you an update. So as of this recording, we just went under 1,600, down from 2,400 to under 1,600, 1,500 something. And so we're dropping nicely. Why? 
Dr. Boom said, the governor, he helped us. He, when he put in the masks, he said, I, I know that that was a political thing for him to do, that it was probably counterintuitive, but it just helped. And you can just track by the day how the numbers go down uh, because now people are wearing their masks and hopefully it's becoming not political anymore. And people are just saying, let's, let's just do this to get through so we can start opening up life and society again and, and getting back to as much of a normal as we can get to till we get a vaccine. And so, uh, so we're down from 2,400 to under 1,600. So, you know, Lord willing, we will move to orange uh, maybe even by the end of August, somewhere there, and we can say, hey, we've, we're feeling good, and we're feeling responsible, we're feeling like we're walking the tightrope of grace and truth, uh, doing the right thing, and you know, leading our people forward spiritually, we'll move to orange. What about yellow? We don't know, but let me just gander here and say, okay, if everybody, from what Dr. Boom is, and other experts, not just him, but, but other experts, um, if you'll just keep our masks on, keep distance, he says, we can get back to a pretty functional normal in this era, even pre-vaccine. Um, just put the politics of it aside, just do it. And he said, I think, you know, even by September, we could be at that yellow point back down to about 600 beds. That's a very manageable point for us. That would be the point at which we could start doing some services. Uh, we'd still have capacity. Uh, we'd set it low and we'll have all the protocols, masks for sure, and people spaced out and all that kind of stuff. But it'd be progress and it would feel so good. So good for you, so good for us on the staff who are desperate to see some real people. And we realize 100% of you can't come, you wouldn't come, um, and you shouldn't come. So especially those of you that are, who are maybe in the vulnerable population, a little bit older, uh, Dr. Boom said, I, I know this is not popular to say, but they really, that's the population you really, really, really need to take care of the most. We said, okay, this really helps us. This gives us hope. It gives us something to look forward to and, and to pray for, to and to work and to remind ourselves this is what we're working towards uh, to achieve as a community. And uh, so I just thought that I would bring uh, a little bit more clarity to how that's going. Now, let me anticipate a question that will come up. And that is the question, once we open, do we just get to stay open forever? We would hope so. If people relax guards, start taking off their masks, start hugging each other, breathing on each other, and you know, germs, the curves will go back up. And people go back in the hospital, all that kind of stuff. It's very predictable. Um, and so we'll be the ones who will have to, you know, together, collectively, communally, throughout our county, say, let's not do that. Let's just go with good enough. We're getting to do stuff. Let's keep the masks on, let's keep our distance, and let's stay open. There's one thing that Dr. Boom said, I, I do wanna caution you pastors about one thing, and that is, um, yes, maybe there'll be a, a fall surge, we don't know, but uh, we didn't know about this sort of su second summer surge uh, that we had. Uh, we didn't anticipate it, he said. So we don't know. He said, one thing that we do know though, is that we see a tidal wave that could come. And that would be if someone gets the flu this fall and COVID. He said, that will most certainly be a deadly combination. If you are diagnosed with flu virus and COVID virus at the same time, that's just gonna be so hard on anybody's system. He said, so the, the one, uh, you know, just medical plea I would ask you pastors to ask your congregations would be, please, please, please get your flu shot this year. Only 40% of Houstonians normally get it. He said to get to herd immunity for the flu, we really need to be at 80 plus percent for the flu. And so that's a lot more people getting shots than have gotten the shots. And I know many of you uh, who say, ah, I've never gotten the flu shot, or I got it one time, and I think I got sick after I got the flu. He said, you know, this, this would really, really, really be the year to just lean on people and say, just 
go ahead and do it. Um, because at least we would reduce the possibility, the, the likelihood, uh, there's still a possibility of this deadly mix of flu and COVID. He said that, that is, that's the wild card that we in the medical community have our eyes set on as we look out the fall. So uh, hopefully we don't get there. So when the flu shots come out later in August, early September, he said, please <laughs> go get your flu shot. In the meanwhile, we're praying for the vaccines. Um, and there's cautious optimism that uh, there will even be some vaccines uh, in the medical community of the Texas Medical Center, even this fall. Um, and more in the first quarter of next year. And so uh, there is hope, and that's what I really wanted to leave you with, uh, so that you'd be praying for that, be praying for me, be praying for our staff, be praying for our congregation, be praying for our state, be praying for our nation. There's such divisiveness, there's such upset feelings and, and such vitriol uh, all over the place. And uh, but as kingdom citizens, citizens not just of the United States kingdom, but the kingdom of heaven, we're people of hope. We're people of light. We're people of love. We're people of patience. We're people of truth. And uh, so let's keep staying on that tightrope that is suspended between grace and truth and walking forward winsomely with all the people that we're interacting with and uh, know of my gratitude for the opportunity to serve you as pastor. Have a good week. <laughs>